What is up, Optimal Health Warriors, and welcome to episode 50 of the Optimal Health Show. How to stop aging and look 15 years younger, the master checklist. In this episode, you will learn what causes aging, could too much sun be bad for you, how safe is your air, do genes really play a role in aging, what are the absolute foods that you must avoid, plus, is high fructose corn syrup really that bad? the importance of blood sugar levels, and can glutathione make you look younger? Now, if you haven't done already, please head over to amiarosic.com and get your free Optimal Health Blueprint. You will discover how to maximize your hormones, boost your IQ, and improve your sleep in under 21 days. Our special warrior guest today is Dr. Trevor Holly Cates. She is a leading naturopathic doctor who advises a board list of patients globally with a holistic, integrative approach to total wellness. As a first woman licensed as a naturopathic doctor in the state of California, California, Cates was appointed by the former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger to California's Bureau of Naturopathic Medicine Advisory Council and has served on the board of the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians. Dr. Kate practices as a naturopathic physician at the Silver Mountain Building located off the Kimball Junction in Park City, Utah, where she provides her patients with personalized total wellness plans. She is also a sought-after speaker, educator for events nationwide. So that's what I'm talking about, Optimal Health Warrior. Today's show is going to be absolutely amazing. So please, sit back, relax, and enjoy today's awesome podcast with Dr. Trevor Holly Kate. Hey, Dr. Cates, thank you for joining me on the Optimal Health Show. How are you doing? Great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I think I heard of, about you from my good friend, Sean Croxton. You're on a show. And I'm like, wow, you know, she's one smart cookie. She has a lot to say. So that's why I brought you on board here today. And we're going to be talking about anti-aging, you know, what causes you to age faster and simple tips you can do on an everyday scale to actually decrease uh, your aging. So why don't we just quickly jump into it and tell all the Optimal Health Warriors out there, in your own words, what do you think are the top three or five things that's actually causing everybody to really rapidly age today? Well, you know, a lot of aging is from oxidative damage that occurs, and it, it can happen from, for different reasons. And, we, you know, it has a lot to do with lifestyle, so how we eat, how much sun exposure we get. Um, and you know, those are the sorts of things and, and also just how we show up in life, you know, how we deal with stress, um, these, all these kind of lifestyle factors really make an impact on how quickly we age and we're all getting older. There's no, there's no way to stop time, but there's certainly things that we can do to prevent premature aging. Yeah. And you know, besides father time coming down and saying, Hey, you know, it's time for you to get old. Is there anything in our nutrition today or environment that you think is contributing to our advanced aging? Because a lot of people are getting sick fast. There's people who are in their 40s, they look like they're in their 80s and they can barely walk. So what are the main things happening today that may be contributing to our high rise in diseases and aging? Well, um, certainly things like smoking cigarettes, it ages people very quickly. Exposure to a lot of sun, getting out in the sun without... Um, any protection is, is going to cause increase in aging really quickly. Um, and, and, you know, those are two big things. A lot of people talk about what some people don't talk about though, is our exposure to environmental toxins in our environment. So it's not just cigarette smoke, but you know, the things in our air and our water and our food and, and what we're exposed to on a regular basis. So we're all exposed to regardless of where we live. I mean, some of us have more exposures than others, but that certainly has a huge impact. And then our genetic makeup causes us, some of us, to be more likely to age quick, more quickly as a result of those exposures. And then also, you know, food, of course, the foods we eat. Are we eating a lot of processed, hydrogenated oils? Are we, you know, fried foods, a lot of sugar, caffeine, alcohol, those sorts of things? They're definitely going to cause us to age a lot more quickly as well. Now, when you mention foods, uh, any foods in particular today that everyone should stay the hell away from? 
Uh, yeah, you know, I do in my, uh, my 21 day healthy habits challenge that I have on my website. Uh, one of the challenges I, I give people is to look in their pantry and see what's lurking there because we get in the habit of, of buying the same foods over and over again and ordering the same foods in restaurants. So, you know, we just get this, this habit of, of eating the same foods and we don't really take a minute to stop and look what's in food. And unfortunately there are a lot of hidden harmful ingredients in our food that we eat. And so of course we want to eat more whole foods and that's a big part of it. I know that's something that you talk about and your guests talk about often is the importance of eating whole foods, right? It's all, um, it's all about but, eating whole foods, but is there any specific ingredients, you know, in modern, I know a lot of people say sugars, but besides sugars, you know, processed sugars, let's, there's a big difference between natural yeah. sugars and processed sugars, but is there any uh, certain ingredients or certain foods that people are eating on a day to day basis that, you know, they should just stop right away. Yeah, well, there are actually quite a few. If you take out of your out of your pantry some of the common things that we eat, like breads and crackers and pastries, um, those are full of oftentimes have hydrogenated oils um, and high fructose corn syrup. They have refined processed grains. Um, and not only when we have the, the white flowers and the processed grains, not only are we taking out important nutrients like B vitamins and calcium, magnesium, things like that, but we're also with the bleaching process of white flowers, it leaves behind some harmful byproducts. And that over time, along with that and along with the other environmental toxins we're exposed to, create health problems. And so, um, those are some of the things. So again, so hydrogenated oils, high fructose corn syrup, those white refined flowers, artificial sweeteners is another one. Um, you know, things like NutraSweet, Sweet and Low, um, Splenda, all of those, um, they trick the body into thinking it's having something sweet. So we still end up eating sweet foods and there, you know, there's a great um, link between people that drink those sodas with artificial sweeteners with increase in uh, uh, obesity because people are still eating those sweet foods. They think they're doing a good thing, but they're actually not. And 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 then there's also a question about what those ingredients, those artificial sweeteners, are really doing in our body. How is our body processing those things? Yeah, it's always funny though how you know. We get brainwashed to think certain foods are healthy, or like NutraSweet or, you know, back in the day, aspartame, and it's like, oh, it's okay for you. But in reality, that stuff is poisoning. Now, you mentioned hydrogenated oils for a second. Uh, for anybody listening out there, can you go into more details about that and explain what oils are hydrogenated oils? Yeah, so you can usually just, when you're looking at ingredient labels, you can look and see what are, you know, it has to say on there, hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils. And these are trans fats. So these are the worst kinds of oils, the worst kinds of fats that we can have. And they're definitely they're linked to heart disease um, and other chronic diseases. I mean, there have been, you know, concerns maybe linked to diabetes and, and definitely obesity because our body, these, these the hydrogenation process, our body doesn't really know how to process those things very well. So they're often in things like pastries, um, donuts, uh, biscuits, chips, popcorn, those, those, you know, packaged foods. But just look at the ingredient label and it should be on there. Partially hydrogenated or hydrogenated. Just want to stay away from those. Really not a good food for us. And where do you put sugar uh, and going back to processed sugar in the mix of all this? Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I think people definitely need to be careful with their sugar intake. And um, when we start to eat sugar, food, sugary foods or the, the foods that our body sees as sweet and sugar, um, you know, we just get in this vicious cycle of craving more and and more. And it creates imbalances in our blood sugar, which changes our mood and causes us to gain weight and um, all kinds of problems. So it's better to stick with things that don't have any added sugar and even foods that you might think of as natural or healthy. Uh, you can even find things at the health food store that are full of sugar. Like for example, yogurt. If you look at like a Yoplait yogurt or something along those lines, 
and you look at the sugar content, most people are going to be really surprised to see how much sugar is in foods like that or like uh, a, um, a smoothie or something that's already put together lots of fruit. People think, oh, it's just full of fruit. But if you look at the sugar content, it's loaded with sugar. And it's going to ha- sometimes have just as much sugar as a soda, if not more. What's your take on fructose? Oh, well, high fructose corn syrup is, is also one of the worst ingredients that you want to look for in food. If you see something with high fructose corn syrup, stay away from it. Um, we metabolize high fructose corn syrup very differently um, than other types of sugar, and it puts a greater risk for obesity and type 2 but diabetes, more so than regular sugar. So definitely stay away from that. Uh, we, you know, I believe, and, and, and a lot of other people believe that's probably one of the reasons why we have such high rates of obesity and diabetes in our country is because of the excessive amounts of high fructose corn syrup that you find in foods. And the biggest source is soda. Sodas contain high fructose corn syrup, unless it's a natural soda, all sodas contain it in the U S um, other countries don't have high fructose corn syrup because they know how bad it is for, for us. But in the United States, it's used frequently, unfortunately, and partly because it's really cheap. And I think it has a really long shelf life, but certainly because of the cost factor. Um, cost but- factor makes some money. That's you know, like billions and billions of dollars in high fructose corn syrup. Oh my god! Yeah. So um, yeah, it's definitely one of those things you want to stay away from. Cool. And you mentioned earlier environmental um, pollutants. Mm-hmm. So let's go a little bit more detail on that. Okay. Um, so we, the environmental pollutants are all around us. They're unfortunately they're in our air, um, air in, inside our homes, as well as the air outdoors. Most of the time people think of the air outdoors in a city where there's a lot of car exhaust, which is certainly a problem. And it's definitely a problem here in Utah. I live in Park City, Utah. I'm up above it, but Salt Lake City has some of the worst air quality in the, in the country and sometimes in the world. It's, wow. it's pretty crazy because it's in, stuck in a valley. Um, but a lot of times people think of that, but they don't always think about the air in our homes. And actually, that could be a big problem too because there are a lot of, there's a lot of off-gassing of um, chemicals from our furniture, from, from synthetic materials in our furniture, as well as cleaning products, um, anything we use, you know, like pesticides or anything like that that we use in our home. So people want to be careful about what you bring into your home because that's a place where you have control over your environment. You don't have control over walking down the street and a diesel truck driving by you and blasting you with a bunch of smoke, but, but you do have control over your home. And so there are certain things that we can do in our homes is being careful about what kind of cleaning products you use, what kind of furniture and clothing and um, fabrics and things like that you bring into your home, draperies and all that. Just be careful. Just think about it before you bring it in because all of that adds up. I agree 100%. Now, what can a person then do to protect themselves inside of their home? Well, um, in your home, you, you know, being careful about what you purchase, what you bring into your home. Um, and also in things like air purifiers can be helpful. Changing the, the air filter in your um, central air system at least once a month can help clear the air out a little bit. Um, doing things like um, getting an, a water filtration system in your home. And we want to drink filtered water because that is another source of exposure of chemicals to us is is through our water. And so it's good to get a really good water filtration system. But also in in showers, and um, it's if we don't have a filtration system on a shower, the chlorine and other chemicals that are in the water aerosolize. So they go into the air and we actually breathe that in. And same thing with dishwashers. Um, if you're using chlorine in the dishwashing um, soaps, that also can go into the air and we breathe that in too. Yeah, I always recommend people, you can go to like a Walmart or a Home Depot and they have $40 carbon filters for chlorine that anyone can install in the shower filters. Just, and there you go. Uh, I didn't that though. What type of filters do you recommend for drinking water inside of your home? 
Well, I, I think that reverse osmosis is the, the best filtration system to remove everything out. And that will remove, you know, solvents and heavy metals and bacteria, all of those sorts of things. And so it's, it's basically the best we have to filter out. The problem with reverse osmosis is that it also takes out minerals. So there are now systems that can um, add back minerals, um, create pH balance. You can get pretty fancy with these options now. But um, really, for me, I think that the most important thing is just getting out all the harmful ingredients. And then you can get, you can also get the minerals, the nutrients you need from food and Maybe it doesn't necessarily have to come from your water. But if you want to get the mineral add back, you can. Cool. Now, say a person fixes their diet and controls their environment. Is there any certain testings people can do to kind of determine the biological age of their body? Well, there, there are um, genetic testing. There's genetic testing. There's also, um, you know, we can look at telomere, telomere length and things like that. Um, I, I don't like people to get too caught up in testing um, because, you know, with genetic tests, it, it's a mixed blessing because if you do some genetic t- testing, it'll give you some ideas of predispositions that you may have to disease or to, um, to premature aging. But do we really, sometimes it's, it's kind of tough to know that because what do we do with that information? Uh, I think that we should all just make smart choices and, and certainly, you know, if you really feel like you want to know that, have that information, as long as people can take that information and use it proactively rather than fear-based. Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. And that's the thing, though. You have numbers in front of you. What you do with these numbers? Like, how do you actually apply it in your body? And even with the telomeres testing, I think there's still some debate. They're, like, talking about, is that really your age, the length of telomeres? Or now they're talking about, oh, the rapid rate of the telomerase enzyme, you know, which is what, you know, they're, they're still not conclusive of exactly that functioning to prove your biological age. I always say a good mirror test is good, right? You see yourself <laughs> in front of a mirror, you look good and like, okay. And obviously yeah. other standard stuff, like you can check, you know, a proper hormone panel, you know, yes, uh, col- cholesterol <laughs> density, etc. And that's, that's stuff that we can have control over. And um, so getting basic blood work done can give a lot of information about how we're doing. You know, getting a metabolic panel gives us information about our blood sugar balance, our liver and kidney function. Um, CBC, um, complete blood count, gives us information about our blood cells and making sure they're in balance. Um, also certain nutrients we can test for like vitamin D or B12, folate, those are, you can run in a, in a standard panel. Um, our cholesterol levels is another indication. And hormones, like you said, our hormones do change as we age. And most of our hormones decline, uh, whereas some of our hormones, like our stress hormones, go up. And so it becomes more challenging for us to, to balance our hormones, but it also becomes more and more important if we want to age gracefully. So, um, you know, when, we, when we're exposed to the environmental toxins, the, one of the concerns about that is that there are endocrine disrupting effects of some of these chemicals. That means they're, they, they throw off our hormone balance. And so that's another big reason to be careful about what we're exposed to. And then also just because we're all exposed to things on a day-to-day basis, no matter where we live, it's good to do some sort of cleanse program. I recommend at least once a year to my patients doing a liver cleanse, um, maybe even a juice fast, um, just to help the body make sure that the body, you know, your liver, your, your routes of elimination are all working well so that you're able to process everything that comes your way in addition to reducing your overall exposure to things. What would, and- a, what would a liver cleanse look like? Well, I have, I, I customize different ones for my patients and ba- based upon what their needs are. But the, the basic one I do is a, a three week cleanse program. And it involves taking a lot of foods out of our, our diet that um, are challenging for the liver or that create inflammation in the body. And you're probably aware of what those foods are, you know, like sugar, alcohol, caffeine, also things like dairy products and um, 
uh, gluten. And so in it, I also help people identify what their food allergies or sensitivities might be, and they would want to avoid those during this time as well. And then focusing the diet on whole foods that are more anti-inflammatory, that are liver supportive, um, and you know, giving the body a break from those those inflammatory uh, liver toxifying ingredients is is a great thing to do. And you know, you can do it for a week, but I find that when people do it for three weeks, it has an even greater effect of not just helping the body eliminate, eliminate things out of the body, uh, you know, the toxins out of the body, um, and, and kind of give the liver and the, the, uh, rats of elimination kind of a kickstart, but it also kind of resets us a little bit. So I find that people don't have the same kind of food cravings that they normally do, not less of the sugar, sugary cravings, the salt cravings, those kinds of things. People want less of those foods if they go the, a good three weeks without them. But don't you think, though, like if you're looking for, you know, anti-aging type of modalities, you shouldn't be eating those foods in the first place? Right. And so the great thing about doing the three-week cleanse is when my patients come in to see me for these, I say, just just do it for three weeks and see how you feel. And usually at the end of three weeks, people feel so great that they don't want to eat those foods anymore. So, or, or they start eating them again and they feel bad. So then they realize the connection between their diet, what they're eating, and how they feel. And that's so powerful. It doesn't matter how much I tell people how, you know, what to eat or what not to eat. If they feel it and they notice the difference themselves, that has a huge impact. Are you, uh, are you a proponent of IV therapies? Of IV nutrient therapy? Yeah. Replenish- yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think IV nutrient therapy can be great because there are so many people that have digestive problems today and aren't able to absorb the nutrients that they eat through the food or even that they take through supplements. Um, you know, and certainly that I should I don't want to downplay the importance of a good diet and and um, you know certain supplements, but uh, for some people it's particularly challenging to get that absorption that they need, and IV nutrient therapy can be a great way to just get those nutrients directly into the bloodstream out. I would, I, uh, I, you know, I have certain practitioners that I recommend for this because it's, you have to be careful with this because you are putting things directly into the bloodstream. So you got to look at purity and what you're putting in there and all of that. So it's, you know, I want people to be careful with that. What's your take on the glutathione IV pushes? Oh, uh, glutathione can be fantastic. Um, the thing about, uh, glutathione is if we try and take glutathione as a supplement, our body doesn't really recognize it. it doesn't really, it isn't able to use it the same way. So um, glutathione works better if you use it as a, actually as a nebulizer or putting it directly in as an IV. If we were to try and uh, increase our glutathione levels through our diet or supplements, we would want to take things that can, that increase glutathione, that cr- create glutathione as like uh, and acetylcysteine or vitamin C and, and taking those things or getting them in our diet, those are going to, to help, um, increase our glutathione naturally, which is great. And I'm, I'm guessing that your, um, your audience knows what glutathione is, but. Oh yeah. Well, the, just to clarify the, the reason why some glutathions aren't really, um, they're not really good at boosting natural is a tripeptide. First, you have to break it apart and put it back together. So when you give it the building blocks, such as N-acetylcysteine or vitamin C, which is um, what helps produce a glutathione, you're initially giving it like the building blocks, like I mentioned, to actually build up. So I've, I've seen some really interesting work for uh, glutathione pushes with like Parkinson's disease. Um, I don't know the long-term uh, pre- uh, repercussions, but it's interesting. It's a really interesting field of work at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So glutathione really helps with our detoxification pathways. Our liver needs glutathione for detoxification. So that's why it's so essential. Cool. Uh, what's your take yeah. on infrared saunas? Infrared saunas are also a great way for, um, detoxification. And I do recommend those for my patients when they're, um, doing a cleanse program or, you know, just even periodically, um, to, to help with, um, detoxification. So 
what happens is the same sort of thing that happens with exercise too is when our body heats up it causes um, lipolysis, which is the fat cells breaking apart. And that fat cells is where we carry a lot of toxins. So that's why saunas are so great and, same, and also exercise. It. Infrared saunas are, you know, very, you know, um, it's a direct way to get those, lipo it's, you know, lipolysis happening. We perspire. We're, we're letting those toxins out of our body. I, I do find that some people need to be careful with with doing saunas. People that have a really high level of toxins built up in their body will sometimes feel really if they go do a sauna because they've got too much release of toxins all at once, and they might get headaches, they might feel nauseous, dizzy. Um, so if somebody has a high exposure to toxins, I'd want to be very careful with when I would introduce sauna. So they're not for everybody. Also, people that are very sensitive to temperature, to heat, they might not tolerate a sauna very well. Going back to the IV for a second, do you use in your practice chelation therapy for anti-aging? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, and I personally don't do any IV nutrients or IV chelation. I do have that I refer to for those things. Um, for me, I find that oral chelation works really well and sometimes it doesn't. So then I'll refer patients to someone for IV chelation. Um, again, it's one of those things you have to be really careful f with and find the right practitioner. And um, so when I'm talking about um, oral chelation is I, I always test people first if I'm going to do oral chelation and um, I use a, a, a urine a toxic metals test. And so people will, um, I'll do a pre and a post challenge test. So people will do, um, I give them two different kits. One of them, they just do a random urine collection just to see if they have any current exposure to heavy metals in their diet and their environment. Because sometimes it's, 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 you know, it's a current exposure, but most of the time it's, it's an old, it's a history exposure. So people have it built up in their tissues. They have heavy metals, you know, lead, mercury, arsenic, um, uranium. Uh, there's so many different ones, but lead and mercury are the ones that get most attention. Um, they're built up in people's bodies. And with a just, you know, with a typical um, blood work or urine test, you're not going to get the levels. You're not going to be able to detect those levels in the test. So when people, um, that's why I give a chelating agent, and I'm sure you, you have talked about this. I'm just, this might be a review for for your, uh, for Reviews your are always good. <laughs> but, you know, you know, it's good to hear it again, I guess. Um, so then what the chelating agent does is it binds to the heavy metals and pulls it out of the body. And that's when you do the urine collection is after taking the chelating agent, which I usually use DMSA or EDTA or maybe a combination. And then, so then they do a, a urine collection after that. And then that gives us information of what's actually stored up in the body, which is where the biggest problem is. We want both. We want that pre and post challenge so that, that I get information for that. And then if a person's levels that high um, for the post challenge for the, you know, what's stored up in their body, then I'm going to want to do a similar type of treatment for them using the chelating agent to help continue to pull the heavy metals out of their body in addition to, and I do it phased. So you know, they'll do the chelating agent and then I'll also do add back. So people are getting the nutrients they need because when you do chelation, oftentimes pulls out the minerals in addition to the heavy metals. So you got to replenish the body too. How often do you do the rechecking of the heavy metals? Um, three, every uh, three to six months generally. And a part of it is people's symptoms Usually when, pe when I do the test, people are having symptoms. And so um, if I find that their symptoms are getting uh, less, then that's a great sign. If they're still having symptoms, I might wait until their symptoms improve more before I do the test. And, and uh, sometimes I have to slow down the chelation because people um, start to have symptoms, um, you know, headaches and things like that. So just cut back on the chelation and phase it a little bit differently. Cool. So we're closing in on the end portion. I always ask my guests this one question. 
If you have to summarize, what is your number one optimal tip you'd like to give somebody? Oh, number one, there's so many. I know. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, I, I actually, um, I think the, the power of positive thinking is so big for us. And, um, in fact, I went back and did a master's degree in spiritual psychology uh, a few years ago through the university of Santa Monica, because I, I found that the, um, the psychology, why people choose to do things and, and, um, and how they, you know, react to things is really important. Um, so I would say that, you know, if we have a positive attitude towards life and towards our body and who we are, our self image, then it can make a lot of these things a lot easier. So it makes eating healthier, easier and makes exercising easier. Um, and things t tend to fall into place better for people. So I guess that would be the one thing. And, and that's one of also why I did the 21 day healthy habits challenge, why I created that. It's a, uh, online on my website, people go through 21 days of, of incorporating 21 different really essential healthy habits. And I incorporate a lot of those positive thinking as part of that. Dr. Kate, I want to thank you so much for coming on the Optimal Health Show. Where can people find more information about you? And better yet, where can they get that 21 day detox program? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so my website has all that information, and it's drtrevorkates.com. So it's Dr. D-R-T-R-E-V-O-R-C-A-T-E-S.com. And they can also go directly to 21dayhealthyhabitschallenge.com. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dr. Cates. Till next time, have a great day. Okay. Thank you.